Hey everybody, I'm Hal Weeks coming to you from Daigle Auto Harps for Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I get asked again and again about the secrets to filling in. It seems to come down to most people wondering about how do you fill in the gaps in a melody with rhythm and how do you go back and forth between rhythm or how do you keep the rhythm going at the same time as you're playing melody. Here's what it comes down to as an overview. It depends on what fingers you're using to play the melody with. And if you have developed the techniques to play the melody in several different ways, using different fingers and different patterns to play the melody, and if you have developed different finger patterns for playing the strums. This is what my channel is about. I try to teach some basic patterns that can then be adapted into many other patterns for playing strums and for playing melodies so that these two things, strumming and melody, can intersect and fit together like Legos. So, um, bear with me um, because I've got to cover lots of different kinds of melody picking so that you come to the ones that you can do. It is your responsibility to learn to do these various kinds of melody picking and rhythm picking. And I'm not going to teach those in this video. I've already taught them in various other videos. Um, and so you can go back and review those. I will give you the names. You want to learn for rhythm. You want to learn rocker. You want to learn Travis. You want to learn arpeggios and you want to learn scratch. So if you go back and you look at my four videos about that and you work those up, not for a day and not for a week and maybe not even for months, but get really, really good at those things. And for melody, you have to be able to pinch. You have to be able to pinch with your middle finger, always pinch with your middle finger, pinch, pluck, walk, play melody with your thumb with plucks, with alternating with an index finger or middle finger, and eventually going both directions with your thumb pick. The finished product that you get between playing melody and blending that with a strum all depends on which strum you're using and which melody style you're using. And a lot of times it comes down to what's most convenient for your fingers. The general rule is that when you come to a pause, you've got a long note in the melody. It depends on what you just played that note with as to what rhythm strum you're going to drop into. What is most convenient? Melody picking and rhythm do not go on at the same time, other than if you're playing melody with your fingers, your thumb might be keeping the beat underneath. Otherwise, when there is a break in the melody, whether it be one beat, two beats, or four or five or six or eight beats long, that's where you're going to fill in and you're going to drop immediately into a rhythm strum. And usually, and this is extremely important, the last note of melody you played is the first note of the rhythm that you're going to play. And then it's just a matter of filling in with, say, eighth notes until the melody comes around again. 
And then you have to be all about the melody playing until there's a break. Now, if there are quarter notes in the melody, say like uh, when there is a break in the melody, even if it's just one beat, you can fill in with a beat. Say it's just a thumb stroke, like. Like that. Very simple to do, just keep the beat with your thumb. But you can also fill in on the half beats. Now look at what I'm doing. I'm pinching, as I said, with the middle finger. That leaves this finger for filling in in between. Notice that my pluck, which is on and, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, the and of my finger is lower than the melody note. It goes ding dong. So it's giving a harmony note. It's also should be quieter than the melody note so that it's clear that that's backup. So I'm punching the melody note, not hard, but. And playing this somewhat quieter in the background. Now this is the most simple kind of filling in. Um, so I might just fill in with some thumb strokes in between. Like if I were to play. Um, Basically, I'm just marking time. I'm filling in beats until the melody comes back. And ex what I mean by that is I have not counted out and memorized, okay, this note has six beats after it. This note has seven beats after it. This note has eight beats. No, that's too much work to memorize. All I do is I fill in until I feel the melody come back. So in question, how do you know where to fill in or what strum to use? It's not a question of counting out the beats and calculating all this out. It's just a matter of filling in until the melody comes back and then resuming. Also, the first note of the strum fill is the last note of the melody. So I'm counting the last note of the melody, that pinch is the first beat of the fill-in pattern. I'm not counting beats. I'm just filling in until I hear that melody note come back. Now, what if I'm using a more complicated strum in the song? A lot of people ask me, how do you pick what strum to use in the song? Do you want the strum, do you want the song to be driving like a train? Or do you want it to be gentle like a lullaby? Now that's two big generalizations. There's all kinds of stuff in between that. But basically, do you want it to like be real rhythmic or do you want it to be real lyrical? If you want it to be real rhythmic, you want to choose either Travis or you want to use scratch now 
both of those, I played the melody with my thumb. The thumb is stronger, and it gives a strong impression. Now, I could pinch. But I use a different fill-in because it's easier. Now, what am I doing? Let me take the pinching thing through three different strums for you, or even four, okay? So pinch with your middle finger. Don't pinch like this, because it doesn't leave you any fingers to work with. This way, you've got two fingers below your melody to start out with. So, if I do my thumb only, Saying the syllables is really hard for me, so I'm going to try to not say them so I don't mess it up. That's the thumb. Now I'm going to use rocker. And notice that I have a finger available to do rocker with below the melody note. That's rocker. Now, just one step further than rocker is Travis. Travis can't even come into the picture until we get the long pause of a few beats at the end of the phrase. And you see I only had time for one reiteration of Travis before the melody resumed. Same thing would work with the thumb if I played the melody with the thumb on the bottom. It's a little different, isn't it? So if I use scratch, I can scratch with a pinch, playing the melody with the finger. I can scratch with the thumb, or when I'm playing melody with the thumb. Notice I'm keeping the finger curled in when I'm not using it. So it's in position when I'm ready. When I slow down, I mess up. If you want, when I'm doing it fast and doing it right, you can slow down the video. Go under the gear in the corner of the video and adjust the speed, and you can do, do this in slow motion. Now if I play it with my thumb, let me do it slow.
Okay. So we've covered Travis, we've covered Rocker, we've covered Scratch. What about arpeggios? Arpeggios is when you go through a sequence. Well, with arpeggios, it depends where did I leave off? What was my last melody stroke? Was it with a finger? Then my arpeggio is going to start up here, go down and back up. Again, this might benefit if you slowed the video down. I'll try to slow down now. So when I get to a long note, the note itself is the first note of the arpeggio. And in this case, my arpeggio is going M-I-T-I. -I. And that's all I have time for. Now I have time for more. Now, if I'm playing the melody with my thumb, then my thumb is going to be the first stroke of the arpeggio, and it's going to go up and then down, T-I-M-I. -I. Now, this is only one melody. All melodies are different. They have their long notes and their pauses in different places. Again, let me reiterate, I do not calculate the length of the pause. I just fill in until the melody resumes. Also, I make an aesthetic choice based on do I want it to be driving or do I want it to be lyrical? If I want it to be lyrical, I'm going to choose arpeggios. I'll try to slow it down. There's several different things going on there, including pinch pluck to play melody, walking my fingers, and arpeggio fill-ins. Again, done from muscle memory rather than by calculating it out ahead of time. You can calculate every single strug strum out ahead of time, but do you really need all of that memorization work. Work on learning and ingraining the strums. Work on learning and ingraining the muscle memory of the melody picking styles. And most of all, have fun playing your auto harp. This one has gotten really long. I know that. Hopefully this will help and show you something. Remember that slow down control, that, that um, slow motion speed control in the gear setting on YouTube. Um, if this has helped you, I work hard to help you. And I would appreciate it if you became a member over at Patreon, a patron over at Patreon, drop me a few bucks a month to keep me going um, because it literally keeps me going on this. And 
I'm getting very, very busy with repair work, which is a good thing. But it's hard for me to take the time to make these videos and edit these videos. I could be spending more time making them and charting them out and giving you visual references and uh, auditory references. I just don't have time. Busy guy, which is a good problem to have, I guess. However, um, your patronage over on Patreon helps me keep going. And thank you, thank you, patrons, for chipping in and giving something back. So I hope that you get something out of this. I'm Hal Weeks. Thanks for watching. Stalking the Wild Auto. Bye-bye.